Hi everyone, Tim Richards here. Thank you for joining me for this clip on modes. I've noticed that this is a topic which causes massive confusion amongst a lot of people trying to get to grips with jazz. I'm going to show you a really easy way to find the right mode for the most commonly encountered chords in jazz. I'll also show you a really simple routine that you can do in two minutes which will hopefully banish any confusion forever. OK, I'm going to start with an ordinary C major scale. You may see this referred to in textbooks as the Ionian mode. However, I don't know any musicians who use this term. We all think of it as just a, an ordinary C major scale. Now, if you take the root third, fifth and seventh, you get a C major seven chord. And if you see this chord in a chart, either with a triangle or with MAJ7 or even big M7 or even just C, this is the obvious scale to play. You can play the chord in the left hand if you're a piano player. Notice I played the chord on the first beat of the bar and you can loop the scale in fact to keep it in 4-4. Four, four. I'm now playing in swing quavers as well, so I think it's really important to play scales with a groove, with a pulse, with a tempo. So I'm going to play the chord in the left hand and the scale in the right. Three, four. Notice how the chord is always on one. It's a good idea to get used to keeping track of where the one is and coming down the one is on B, not C. It has to be on the first beat of the bar. Now you're also going to come across chords with flattened sevenths, in this case C7. That's called a dominant seventh type chord. So if you encounter this chord and you want to play on top of it, you should flatten the seventh in the scale as well giving you this scale. So that's called a Mixolydian scale. Let's play it with our C7 chord in the left hand. Three, four. All you need to remember about that scale is, first of all, it's got a flattened seventh otherwise it's the same as a major scale and it fits dominant seventh chords so for a C7 chord you play the C mixolydian scale. Now you're also going to come across minor seventh chords they're the same notes but with a flattened third C minor seven. In order to play over that scale guess what you just have to flatten the third Keep the flattened seventh from the mixolydian and flatten the third. Let's try this with a C minor seven chord in the left hand. One, two, three, four. That's called a Dorian scale or a Dorian mode. All you need to remember about that is that it fits minor seventh chords and that it has not only a flattened seventh but a flattened third. Otherwise, it's just like the major scale. It's a good idea to run these three scales into each other. Make this part of your warm up. Today we're doing it in C, so I'll play the three scales without stopping in time. Maybe do twice each, just in case I make a mistake first time. Two, three, four. <laughs> played two ordinary major scales, two Mixolydian scales and two Dorian scales, all in C. 
just remember what you only flatten one note at a time so I recommend practicing this little exercise it won't take you very long just do it starting on a different note whenever you practice so today we did C tomorrow you might do G so just re remind yourself of the three chords play the arpeggios G major 7 G7 seven, flattened 7th G minor 7 flattened 3rd I'm going to play the chords in the left hand because I'm a piano player piano players take note I'm going to put the 7th on the bottom to make a rootless voicing I'm going to try and play each one once only try and get it right first time just remembering to flatten the 7th and then the 3rd the habit of playing these three scales as a warm-up every time you sit down and practice in a very short time you're going to learn 12 Dorian scales and 12 Mixolydian scales in addition to the major scales which I expect you already know. In the next clip I'm going to show you why I believe this to be a much more practical and useful method of visualizing modes than the so-called parent scale method which is what you find in many textbooks. But I'll also show you some ways of applying these modes to situations that you find in many jazz standards. See you later!